Warning, this podcast is a bad idea and should not be taken seriously. If you're looking for thoughtful and thoroughly researched discussions of various works of cinema, you won't find them here. Kevin and Robert are, and I say this lovingly, idiots. But if you think you'll enjoy listening to two boneheads slowly descend into madness as they discuss the same movie over and over again without rewatching it, then sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. I saw that once, a rewatch podcast where we will never rewatch it. My name is Kevin Bowles Loman. And I am Robert Coe. And this week we are discussing, for the first time among many, the <laughs> seminal classic, one of the, some would say, greatest movies of all time, Francis Ford Coppola's 1972, I think, masterpiece, The Godfather. The Godfather, Robert, yep. Oh, it's crap. been a while since we've podcasted together. Oh, crap. Are we talking about that? We're talking about that. Tell the people, if they don't know who we are, where they might have known us from before. Well, the last time we had mics in front of us, we were talking... We had a true crime podcast, because what does the world need more than another true crime podcast? Hosted um, by two white guys. Spooky Town USA. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Yeah, that was Spooky Town USA. That was a lot of fun. (laughs) Well, that was then, and this is now. And now what we're doing Mm -hmm. is a movie podcast... And the reason is not that I like movies a lot, because honestly, I think most movies are too long. But uh, (laughs) before we get too far into our discussion, I wanted to just introduce what the podcast is going to be a little bit, because it's kind of a weird, dumb idea (laughs) that I came up with. You keep saying dumb. It's a dumb idea. It is. I Now, yeah. it's important, I think, for our listeners, and maybe I've never told you this before, but when I call something dumb or stupid kind of in that tone that I'm using, that is a compliment because I think dumb, stupid stuff is almost always more fun and interesting than the stuff that's trying really hard to be smart. Ah, so but dumb is good. Me. Dumb is good. Hey, Kevin. And so, yes. You're dumb. I am dumb, and that's the best part of it because it means I'm the perfect host for this dumb podcast where we will watch a movie, one movie per season, and we aren't sure how long our seasons will be yet, but we will watch one movie one time, and then we will discuss it again and again and again and again without rewatching it, without doing any research, without re-educating ourselves on what we watched. And so over a period of time, we will see ourselves slowly devolve into madness <laughs> and slowly forget what the movie even is and who was in it and what happens. Mm-hmm. And if I'm being honest, we're starting from a place where I already don't remember much. I'm, I'm so nervous. I just watched the movie yesterday and I'm already like, what was that guy's name? Why was he important? It's going to be interesting. <laughs> it's going to be a fun time. Now, mm-hmm. I want to I get into our thoughts on the movie, but first, on every episode of I Saw That Once, we are going to start the episode off with a quick recap of the movie, which will always happen live from memory with no preparation. <laughs> oh, and I crap! believe this okay. is a bit of a surprise for my friend Robert here. Yeah, a little bit. This is, since this is the first episode, I figured we could tag team this. Okay. Usually I thought we would go, you know, every other week or every other episode, one of us would handle it and we would see how far away we get from the plot over time. But since this is the first episode, since I'm going to be springing a lot of stuff on you, I thought we could tag team it. So okay. I will I love start that. and then you can jump in anytime you want because I'm going to forget stuff. But okay. my friends, oh, crap. The Godfather, we open on a dark, barely lit room. And there's a man who's just sitting there, and he starts asking this man that he's talking to if he'll murder someone for him. And Murder for two next, someones. Murder two someones. Look at that. You already remember so much more than me. Yeah. 
And for the next 30 minutes or so of the movie, it's just intercut scenes from his daughter's wedding and more scenes of people asking him at varying levels of, I would say, respectfulness and appropriateness as deemed by our first half of the movie protagonist, Don Corleone. Vito Corleone. What happens then, my friend? The famous guy shows up. The singer, the guy with the lovely voice, and he shows up and... And he sings a song for the bride, and it's very sweet, but they're like, hey, he wants something. And guess what he does? He wants to be in this movie. And he asks the Don, hey, can you do something about this with all your magic? It'll put me back on the silver screens or the golden screens, whatever the movies are. Uh, (laughs) And then he's like, yeah, whatever. And then there's like, can I go enjoy my daughter's wedding, please? And then they go out, and it's a wedding. And then we cut to Hollywood and the guy who is like the family lawyer slash secondhand man. I believe the word they use is consigliere. Basically, it's the famous horse heads. It's the horse head scene. Everyone knows. He tries to get the singer guy a job in the movies, and the movies guy says no. So he gets a horse's head in his bed. His favorite horse. (laughs) And so I'd say the, the first half of the movie is uh, generally a loose pastiche of these kinds of scenes, of Don Corleone proving his might and throwing his weight around. And then Act 1 ends about an hour or so into it when Don Corleone gets shot. He gets shot five times, and he ends up in the hospital. Before that, we have to mention why he got shot. Why? Because the guy, because the one guy, ah, shit, I'm already already forgetting names. This is going to be great. The one (laughs) guy comes to him and is like, hey, I know you you do gambling and prostitution, but, like, do you also want to get into drugs? And Don Corleone is like, no, because that's bad. Once you get into drugs, our politicians and our cops in our pocket aren't going to want to deal with us anymore, so you can't do it. So the guy goes, I completely understand. And then he shoots him. See, I I forgot most of the plot. I kind of just remember the events. So then Don Corleone ends up in the hospital, and all of a sudden, uh uh-oh, who's going to be in charge of the family now? Surprise, it's Michael Kahn, the guy you probably only saw as the dad in Elf. Oh, my God, that's the guy. That's the dad from Elf. Oh, my God, that's the dad from Elf. Wait. He's an incredibly famous actor. (laughs) But the problem with this new Don of the family is he is, uh, let's say, trigger happy. And he wants an all-out war between the five families of New York, which are the five crime bosses in New York City. And he's just pulling out hit on hit on hit on everyone, isn't he? Sonny is like all, ah, shooty, shooty, shooty. And they they want people to watch uh, Vito Corleone, who's in the hospital. And Michael's like, ah, I'm just a a soldier. I'm a good person. I'm not involved with the family. But I'm still my dad. So he goes to the hospital. And there's no one there. There's no bodyguards. And he's like, what's going on? And he goes and finds the nurse. And he's like, where's the people? And he he says, the cops sent the people away. And he goes, oh, no, that's bad. So this other random guy, a baker or something, this this guy shows up and he's like, oh, I wanted to say hi like to Don Corleone. And Michael's like, quick, put your hand in your pocket. Pretend you have a gun. Make it look like we have guards. This poor and then guy. the people, <laughs> right, his hand when he was, it's, his hand starts shaking. It's great. This is such a good scene. Ah, man, this is a good movie. And then the cops show up, and they're like, hey, we told you guys to get out of here. And it turns out that he is in the pocket. That cop is in the pocket of the guy who wants to kill Don Corleone. And then... I don't remember what happens next. <laughs> but then... And then... Uh, I do. Uh, they're like... The the guy who came to the uh, Vito with the drugs... And the undercut or the the dirty cop who beat up Michael is like, hey, mm. we want to meet. Let's 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 meet. Let's talk this shit out. We'll get over it. And Michael's like, I'll do it, but you have to plant a gun. You find out where the restaurant is. You plant a gun there, and then w- during the dinner, because they're gonna frisk me, I can't have a gun. I'm gonna go to the bathroom, and then I'm gonna find a gun, and then I'm gonna shoot him in the face. And then he does that, and that's what starts off the fa- the war of the five families. So then Michael has to be sent away for an entire year. And at first we don't know where he has gone, but eventually we find out he's been sent to a small village in Italy to hide away until things calm down back at home. And while in Italy, Michael falls in love, which is problematic because he kind of had a girlfriend back home that he never broke up with. (laughs) That's (laughs) right. 
yeah, he just kind of leaves her hanging and then, I'll, I'll write, and then doesn't. So long story short, he's in Italy, he's hiding, he falls in love with this woman, they get married, he is about all set to go back to America. He's going to go back to America with his new wife, and they're getting ready to leave, and his new wife has just learned how to drive, and she insists on driving him, and he said, no, my driver will take me, but she's in the car, and then all of a sudden, Michael's bodyguards that have been protecting him in Italy start running away, and Michael realizes, "Uh uh-oh, something's about to go down, And just as he shouts no, the car explodes, killing his new wife, hard cut back to New York with no explanation or follow-up. Wait, we're also forgetting that Sonny dies in that part, in between those things. I was taking care of the Italy stuff, so you could talk about the New York stuff. (laughs) Oh, so... Okay, so Sonny, there's a there's a sister. They they have a sister, and the sister gets married. The wedding in the first scene. He that husband is a jackass and beats his sister all the time. And I don't so, remember any of this. Oh, jeez, man, this is like important shit. <laughs> I know, and I forgot it. So at first, Sonny's like he sh- or, uh, he goes to visit his sister, and she's got a black eye, and he's like, "Hey, what the fuck?" And she's like, "Don't kill him." And he goes, "Okay, I won't. I just want to talk to him." And then she goes. Or Sonny goes and beats the shit out of Carlos? Carlo. Carlos. Carlo. I can't remember his name. Carlo. Uh, beats the shit out of him, and there's like a fire hydrant, and it's wet. And then he's like, hey, you ever touch her again? I'm going to fucking kill you. And then she does it again, and he beats the shit out of his wife, uh, who is Sonny's sister. And Sonny gets mad, and Sonny's like, ah, I'm going to go kick his ass. And so he's driving to the... Uh, to where the sister lives and he gets stopped at a toll booth and he's like, ah, this guy is not moving. Why isn't he moving? Oh no. The toll booth guy ducks and then a bunch of guns pop out and Sonny gets so shot many a lot. Guns. Uh, and then, so Don Corleone or uh, Vito kind of retires and he's like, ah, Michael is the new thing. And Michael's like, okay, we are going to move our stuff to Vegas, Las Vegas. My dumb wussy brother, uh, Fredo, you go to Vegas and like get us set up or whatever. And then when we get to Vegas, my brother-in-law, Carlo, you're going to be my right-hand man. And the consigliere is like, what the fuck? I'm right here. And he's like, shut up. They go to Vegas and they meet Mo Green. And I only remember Mo Green because it's the only name of the other guys that I remember. <laughs> um, and they're like, hey, we want to buy you out of the Vegas, out of your casino. And Mo Green's like, fuck you. I'm Mo Green. I think he literally says that. I think he literally says, fuck you, I'm Mo Green. I'm pretty sure, yeah. That's yeah. why I remember his name. <laughs> and he's talking with uh, his dad. who He's talking to the original Godfather, and he's like, hey, so a bunch of stuff is going to happen, but there is a traitor amongst us, and the other mob boss wants to meet. The guy who comes to you with that meeting is the traitor, and you need to watch out for him. And so he's like, okay. And then the Vito chokes on oranges and dies. Uh, and at the funeral for Vito Corleone, I'm pretty sure I'm saying that name right. Uh, Honestly, at the funeral, it's said so many ways in the movie. <laughs> uh, at the funeral, um, one of the there's like the two guys that they're like, it's either this guy or it's this guy. Fuck, I should learn these people's names. Nope, I can't. That's the part of this podcast. Oh, this podcast is gonna drive me insane. <laughs> Um, the one guy who comes to him is like, hey, he wants to meet. And like, it zooms in on Michael and he's like, ah, it's this guy. And so then, uh, Carlos, Carlo and, uh, the sister's name is Connie, 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 Connie are like, we're having another baby because I forgot. There's like a lot of time that goes by and now they're having another, another baby. Also, Michael is a kid now. That's just whatever. With the original Uh, girlfriend. With the original girlfriend. Um, and then they're like, we want you to be Michael, godfather. We want you to be the godfather, godfather of this baby. And he's like, okay. And then uh, during the baptism of the baby, and he's like, the priesty guy is like splashing water on him and is like, hey, are you not going to do bad things? And Michael's like, nope, never. I would never do anything bad. And there's a montage of all the people that Michael is having killed, including all of the mob bosses, the, the leaders of the five families, uh, Mo Green, who gets shot in his fucking eye, uh, and someone else. Get- oh, the who else gets shot? There's Maybe it is all the five 
don't remember. Whatever. A bunch of people die. It's really bloody. And the cop does that weird hand thing uh, when he shoots the main mob Gus. And if you know, if you see it, he, his hand is weird. And then uh, the traitor guy is like, all right, let's just go on a normal Sunday drive. And the consigliere is like, I'm not going in the car with you. And all these guys surround him. And the guy's like, tell Michael it wasn't personal. And then he's never seen again. Uh, and then, and then, Michael confronts, confronts Carlo and basically says, hey, we know someone sold out Sonny. I don't like being lied to. Just admit that you did it. And uh, we'll be good. You're just going to go on a long vacation. And the guy's like, all right, I did it. I'm really sad. I'm sorry. Blah, 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 blah. And he's like, okay, let's just go on this car ride. And then he gets garroted, and the car drives off. And the sister is like, how dare you, Michael? You killed my husband. Now my children have no husband. And Michael's like, I didn't do that. And then Michael's <laughs> wife, Nuh-uh. Michael's well, Michael's wife comes up and is like, did you do it? And he goes, I told you never to ask me about my business. And she's like, did you do it? And he looks her in the face and he says, no, it wasn't me. And he lies. Uh, and then credits. Dear listeners, I hope you were as enthralled (laughs) listening to that as I was, because genuinely, I was reminded of basically everything that happens in the movie. I I didn't know how much I had forgotten. And so that's really why I needed my, my, uh, my good buddy over here to take over there, because, boy howdy, I did not remember that that much happens in Act 3. Of this movie. We have but to now, do this for a year. We have we to do this for, do a year. for a year. And it's already so <laughs> bad. It's already so bad. Oh, it's going to be great. It's going to be so much fun. This probably isn't going to be about The Godfather in about 10 weeks. <laughs> no, probably 10 weeks, five weeks. <laughs> well, now that our recap is done and was done so well my, by my friend Robert, let's get into oh, our thoughts, our freewheeling discussion on the movie. Robert. Do you have any initial thoughts that you want to open the conversation with? I liked it. It was fun. Oh. I don't know. I I mean, I, this is one of those movies that like, oh, The Godfather is the greatest movie ever. And I feel mm-hmm. like when people tell me that, I'm like, okay. But this was, this was fantastic. I had such a fun time watching this movie. I am regretful to report that my review of the movie is uh, fairly opposite <laughs> of yours. Really? I, oh shit! So I have a I have a stunning confession to make in episode one of this podcast. This was not I'm the ready. first time I had seen The Godfather. I initially watched The Godfather probably back in 2015 for my first time, and when I tell you that I didn't remember a single thing about the movie, I think I knew less about the movie after having watched it than I knew about it before just from secondhand (laughs) stuff, being an American person. Uh, Mm -hmm. And so I figured this is my first time watching it, and I had that confirmed at least, but the other thing that I had confirmed was also my initial opinion of the movie after that first time watching it, in that I think it is relentlessly boring. (laughs) Wow. Hot takes. I think think it is a well-made movie, I think as a cinematic experience, I understand the achievement, but I am so bored all the time watching it that at so many times I was laughing my head off. Like, really, dude? The scene when Sonny dies, when Sonny pulls up to the toll booth and 17 fucking stereotypical looking mobsters pop out with machine guns. And he's getting shot in the car, and there's blood splattering on the windows, but he's not reacting to getting shot. And then he gets out of the car like nothing's wrong, and then starts flailing like he's going through a fucking exorcist and a demon is inside him. (laughs) And then after about a thousand rounds put into him, it is, it was just comical to me. (laughs) Damn, that that is a hot take. I, I... I don't know. I don't know. Hmm. What tell me tell me what you like about it. I well, I I also this is not my first time watching this movie. I watched this movie <gasps> when I was much younger. Uh, <sighs> and I did I did not get it the first time. I was yeah. not paying attention enough or whatever. Of course. And I feel like this is not a movie I, that kids would enjoy. No. <laughs> um but but I feel like this time watching it and like I knew I had to 
talk about it for a year and I was like, all right, I have to pay attention. <laughs> like I had to super focus. Sure. And and uh I, I feel like I got so much more out of it and like Great. I understood like the beginning the movie starts with the wedding of Carlo and um Connie and ends with I mean sort of ends with the death of Carlo. And like it's this nice little like like bookends of the story and I I feel like I got it so much more now. I I hadn't noticed that and that's very interesting and I am going to accuse you of saying that this story is all about Carlo now. <laughs> Put it on record that Robert yep. Coe thinks that The Godfather is not about Vito, it's not about Michael, re- it's not about any of the actual Corleones. <laughs> it's about the the domestic abusing guy who is in three scenes and is only an he's asshole. He's in more than three. But yeah, he's a piece of shit. <laughs> he's a horrible, horrible piece of shit. Mm-hmm. I think that was also something that made it difficult for me with this movie is I felt like genuinely... I felt like of the main characters, the only one to root for necessarily was Don Corleone, was Marlon Brando. Because interesting, he cared so much about things being done the proper way. He cared so much. It wasn't about the size of the thing you were asking him. It was about the way you presented it. (laughs) He, he He cared so much more about respect and about appropriateness and being proper and i found that so funny and so interesting genuinely because i had this idea in my head and don't forget i'd seen this movie only about eight years ago i had this idea in my head that marlon brando's character was this like absolutely vengeful murderous bloodthirsty person and then i'm watching this what I think is an award-worthy performance, so I'm glad that Marlon Brando did win an Oscar for this. Oh, he did? Hot fact. I'm going to drop that one. I didn't know that. He won his Oscar for playing this, and I think it is well-deserved. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. So once once I was only a third of the way into this three-hour movie, which that's another (laughs) problem, I was a third of the way into this, and he gets shot five times, And it was clear that the movie was telling me this main character is not the main character anymore. And I went, there's so much movie left. And the only guy I cared about is being written off, basically. (laughs) And so from then on, I was like, who am I going to root for? Because I know clearly Al Pacino is going down the road to becoming a murderer guy. No one else is making good choices. No one else is really someone to root for. Everyone is mean and rude. <laughs> and yes, I know they're in the mafia, but come on. I was going to say, that's like the point of a mob movie. But I, know. I mean, I took this whole thing as like the creation of a true villain. And like Ooh. how Michael started out as a war hero all-American boy. He was the only one who wasn't involved in the family business. He was the, like, at one point Vito is like, I this is not the future I wanted for you. And hmm. he uh, he becomes someone who lies to his wife about murdering uh, uh, murdering his brother-in-law. Like, he, it is the creation of the fall of Michael to a truly villainous character. And, like, the way he did it so naturally, like, he, it was his idea to shoot the cop and the um, the other mobster that started off the War of the Five Families. It was his idea to, like, do this. And while Fredo is kind of like a wishy-washy worm of a person and Sonny is this this uh, uh, firecracker, uh, I, oh, I, I, I'm mad now, so I'm going to kill people. Michael <laughs> is a good, like middle ground but he is still a bad character i gotta say you're like i'm thrilled that we have opposite opinions genuinely i am too (laughs) because i think this this makes it so much easier to have more things to talk about in the future but also like these are perspectives that i didn't have I, i wasn't looking through at all i think i i think just on the day that i was watching it i happened to be maybe more technical focused and less narrative focused and so 
I was focusing on things like, uh, like I think one thing that I say not as a negative or a positive, just I think as what feels factual to me is that this is a movie that takes its time with things. And oh, yeah. isn't oh, really yeah. rushing any individual scene. And so the pace of it being so slow and so methodical, I think I struggled to be held by. And uh, where was I going? I lost my train of thought. <laughs> uh, I, I oh, completely yeah. And then see so that, the scenes taking so long meant that there were these like massive jumps in time. There wasn't really any like title thing that said one year later, or there wasn't any like real mention <laughs> that time had jumped. True that 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 happened, but and also um, Carla was pregnant when like Sunny got Connie or whatever whatever the sister's name was. Yeah, she was pregnant at like the first part when Sunny got shot, and then we do those weird jumps, and she's still pregnant. And wanting uh, Michael to be the godfather of her kid. And like, yeah. it's a different kid, but they don't tell you that. You just know that because <laughs> Michael has a four-year-old that just appears out of fucking nowhere. Also, like, Sonny <laughs> has eight kids or something. So many. Do you, remember, do you remember that scene? That's just never addressed. He's just got a crap ton of kids. There mm. were always so many people in every scene. I mean, but that was kind of, I mean, like some of the scenes, that was cool. Like, I mean, the wedding Absolutely. felt like this big, huge, crazy wedding. Uh, the scene where Michael pretends to be the bodyguard and all the cops show up and they start beating him up. And like, there's a ton of cops there. And then all of Michael's people show up and the consigliere is like, I'm a lawyer. Don't do it. Uh, <laughs> like, it was like such no, a big, I don't know. to do that. Yeah. That's his voice now I'm forever. I'm not one I can't of remember. them, Tommy? but I'm trying to be one of them. You are not allowed to be here. <laughs> what was his name? Sammy? I don't remember. Uh, oh, Jamie? Tom, Tommy. Tom. I think it was Tommy. It was, was it Tom? So, okay, here's a question. They always called him about... two names. They called him, like, first and last name all the time. Yeah. Wait, Which here's a question. A fucked up because he said he was basically adopted by the Don when he was a kid, but everyone's still making sure he knows he's not actually part of the family. It's fucked up. <laughs> it's kind of like a Jon Snow, like, bastard yes, scene. Yes, exactly. Wait, I got a quick question for you about the whole what? setup of this podcast. Yeah. I am struggling to remember people's names. Am I allowed to have like a chart of people's names or is that, am I not allowed to do that? Maybe there needs to be some amount of resource just so that we aren't saying 40 times that guy who did the thing and then that thing. Okay. I will make, or uh, we will have a, a name face sheet thing. <laughs> that I will send you. All and right, so that way cool. we won't be like that guy, this guy, what's your face? And that I keep on getting the sister's like name wrong. Complete idiots on this show. At least we'll yeah. sound just like our desired level of idiot. <laughs> Perfect. Well, uh, I figured with this first episode, our thoughts would kind of stick to being more broad and sort of big reactions to it. And then in further episodes, we'll dig deeper and see how much we can actually take. Uh, but do you have anything that you want to wrap up this section of the conversation with that you wanted to bring up for sure? I just like this movie, man. I had so much fun <laughs> with this. Like, seriously, I know I know that, like, again, you've talked about it being like a, a film bro movie. Mm -hmm. But... I get it. Like, I, I, I understand. I mean, you have to pay attention, and I'm sure there's stuff that I missed. I'm amping this up because you don't like it. <laughs> We're filling our roles. We're figuring this out. Yep. Yep. It's going to be great. We're going to talk about this so much, man. <laughs> I know. I'm probably not going to like it by the end of it. My favorite ideas that I come up with are always the ones that are the least fun to do. <laughs> 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 because sometimes I think it's fun to not enjoy the thing you're doing. <laughs> you're a bit of a masochist, aren't you? Uh, yeah, I think you could have just stopped at a bit of a mess. All right, now that we're done with our initial discussion, I wanted to move on to talking about a favorite moment from the movie. So, my friend, I throw to you for this week, uh, what was 
one of your favorite moments of the movie. Oh, favorite moments of the movie. Oh, um, oh, okay. The the scene that I was talking about where they're baptizing the baby and mm-hmm. it's where they're taking out all the heads of the five families. Like that scene and that the like going back and forth between them saying like, do you rebuke Satan and are you going to be a good person and do you believe in God and all that? <laughs> and he's like, yeah, totally. As he's, they're murdering people left and right some people are just innocent bystanders. Like one dude is just a, uh, he, they kick in the door in the bedroom and there's just some chicken there and they're going for the guy and she just dies. Cause she's there. I forgot about that. Yeah. Oh, and then the, the, what is the main, what is the other bad guy's name? What is the, like the, not bad guy. They're all bad guys. Barzini. Okay. And then when they, when they kill Barzini, the poor, uh, driver guy, I mean, I guess he drives for the mob, but like he's just get shot. And then again, weird hand thing. I I'm gonna bring up this weird hand thing that the cop does what every is the single weird episode. Hand thing? What it's is the like weird hand thing? he like aims. It's like this weird. He as he he so he shoots the oh wait he shoots I know the what driver. you're talking about. <laughs> he like puts it on top of his hand real dramatically and slow. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> it's so that is funny. the weird hand thing. You're so right. Ah, see, weird hand thing for the win. Um, so yeah, that that whole sequence of him at the baptism while all the the family business is being taken care of. I will give it to you that that is one of the scenes that I looked at and thought, like, th- I see the things that do make this a great piece of, like, film art. Because I have no, like, Francis Ford Coppola did a great job, and a lot of the performances are so good. And I think a lot of the design elements are like quite achievements especially for how old it is some people that hear this might cringe at me talking about how old the godfather is but it's 51 oh, years God. old get over it holy shit really yeah man i believe if i'm remembering right and i'm not gonna look it up and nobody tell me it was 1972 <laughs> sure that sounds i think like it was 1972 okay 1972 we'll go for it but that yeah, is what like it is that now. scene, I was like, this is this is highly artistic. It was it is well done. One thing I think the movie did really well was its use of music to build suspense. And that was a way that I actually enjoyed when it would take its time was when it was building towards suspense. Because mm-hmm. it, it kept happening where there'd be a scene that was building towards something, and I kept thinking I was feeling when it was gonna happen, but then it was just a little farther away. It was like mm-hmm. watching Return of the King. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which is a more exciting movie, and we can't talk about it on the show because I've seen it so many times. We're not talking about your nerd movie and this <laughs> other nerd movie. Okay, but you're the Lord of the Rings guy, so shut up. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> but that that music thing, I'm going to point this out because I'm going to forget it. The the music mm-hmm. thing you're talking about, one of the scenes to me where they did it the best is the scene where Michael is is in the diner and he's about to shoot the corrupt cop and the guy who brought yes. the drugs. Uh, that scene and like, was so it's, it, slow but effective. And it was not even just music. It was like the noises of the city was like raising and raising yeah. and raising and then he shut up and shot him. The use of music, but also the you like the times when there's only room sound or whatever. Mm-hmm. Highly no effective. What was your favorite part? It's <laughs> I feel like it's weird to say, but I think my favorite scene was the scene when Don Corleone dies in the garden. With the kid? With the kid, because Yeah. It was like that was the scene I had already decided for myself that I th- agreed that his performance was award worthy. But in that scene, when he was like having to play something so different than the beginning of the movie. And it was another scene that was so quiet like that. It was so still. And it was one of the few scenes where there was almost like basically no one and nothing happening on screen. Cause it's just him and his little three-year-old. Mm-hmm. And it took its time in a way where I was like, I know he's about to die. I can tell that's what this scene is and it's not happening yet. And I'm uncomfortable. <laughs> But it was a discomfort where I was like, that's what I'm supposed to be feeling right now, I think. Oh, yeah. I it's He got like a Vito Corleone, who's like this brutal, murderous mob boss, he's a gets a guy. death. But like he gets a death where he's playing around with his grandkids. Yeah, and like he dies of, of old age. Yeah. Yeah. 
He's just he's just an incredibly old man who is sharing a sweet moment. And yeah. then you have to confront the fact that the first person that saw him dead was a little three year old who just saw a dead there body. There was for the that, first yep. Time. There was that. <laughs> it's like also, oh, this this murderous man left one more scar on the world. <laughs> <laughs> he's son of a also, bitch. Son you can bitch. totally tell. You could totally tell that that kid just keeps looking at the um, the director or the cameraman <laughs> yeah. or whatever, just like off Waiting camera. Because he's to a tell kid. him what to do. <laughs> mm-hmm. And when he starts running off, it's so clear that it was. It looked like his mom off stage had said, "Okay, come yeah. here, come here," and he just went. <laughs> you put like the fucking like cartoon Bugs Bunny running sound over him, and it would have worked perfectly. Exactly. Yep. So yeah, I think that was my favorite thing in general. My favorite thing about the movie was Marlon Brando. Which I didn't oh, yeah. expect going into it because I <laughs> I frequently confuse Marlon Brando and Al Pacino for whatever projects they've done. So really, to me, Marlon Brando is both Casablanca. Yeah, no, not in Casablanca. I'm getting a no from the audience. What was You're Marlon Brando the wrong famous person. for? Streetcar Named Desire. So uh, he the, was like that, but then Doctor in my Thoreau head, movie. because Al Pacino was Scarface. Marlon Brando is also Scarface. <laughs> so I went into it expecting not to like him at all, but I just came out absolutely delighted by him. I was like, this is this is a this is a businessman who cares about things being done properly and <laughs> to the letter. And I was like, I can get on board with this. This is not <laughs> irrational. There is always logic behind each of the choices. There it was not emotion. It was not feelings. It was strictly business. It was just business. <laughs> I'm so oh, excited no. to hear our impressions of everyone as we go on. I am not. I'm bad at impressions. I know you are, and that's part of why I'm excited. <laughs> because I delight in impressions, and I think mm. the worst ones are the funniest ones. So it's going to be a good time, my friend. Okay, my friend, now that we've talked about our favorite moments, I want to jump into a bit of a fun thing that I had planned. Um, I don't know if you know this about me. I don't know if really anyone knows this about me except for family members, including those in the room, that I like noisemakers. I like things that are fun to make noises with. And so, for example, I have in my hand a slide whistle. And I thought that every now and then... (laughs) I would give my shot at playing the theme song of the movie we watch each season on an instrument that I am not trained on. I never took any music classes except for one guitar class in high school, and I don't consider myself terribly musical. I think I can sing fine, and I think if I had the will that I could sit down and learn an instrument, but I don't play any instruments, really. So without any further ado... Here is, uh, I don't know the name of the tune, but I call it in my head, the Godfather theme. Play it on a slide. Oh, no. Give me, give me a sec. I believe in you. Oh, hold on. I got to tune it. <laughs> I got to tune my slide whistle. Do you, have a, do you know what key this song is in? Uh, it's the key of G for Godfather. Front door. <laughs> it's, the front, it's, the, it's the key to my heart. Yep. Uh, what? I was about to play the Harry Potter theme. <laughs> <laughs> Focus up. This is becoming my favorite bit. <laughs> I got. I can do it. I can do it. Believe in me. I believe in you. I believe in you. Bravo, sir. Bravo. I think that went exceedingly well. I, I think, think it was wonderful. About the best that I could. And I think about, uh, yeah, that was a fun time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Robert, we're getting towards the end of the episode. Would you like to share any final thoughts on anything we've discussed today or anything about the movie that we didn't bring up or anything you're thinking about, my friend? I think this is going to be so much fun. I am so excited. (laughs) I love hate that you don't like this movie. 
because <laughs> I do like this movie, and it's going to be fun to try and convince you that it's good. And for my final thought, I just want to say it feels good to be podcasting with you again, my pal. Oh, it so does. It's so great. I'm so excited. All right, Robert, it's time, as we will do every week, to rate the movie on our own completely made-up scales. Robert, how would you like to rate this week's movie, The Godfather? Oh, made-up scale? Oh, crap! Um, uh, it's, it's a fucking great out of ten. Oh, that's wonderful. I give it one cotton ball in my mouth out of three. <laughs> For how many hours it took of my life. Wow. (laughs) Robert, uh, what are you watching this week? What's some media you've been interacting with that you want to recommend to the people listening? Oh, everyone should watch Ted Lasso because it's great and happy. And I have a mustache now because of that show. Oh, that is one good thing Ted Lasso has done for the world. Has made plenty more mustaches for me to look at and ponder. There you go. (laughs) I don't know what that means. Uh, I think I'm going to take a feather out of your cap, my friend, and talk about a true crime documentary. It's, it's more a culty documentary. Shiny has what? people on Amazon Prime. Oh, it is yes. about the Duggars and the uh, cult that they belong to. Religious organization with quotes around it. It's extremely good. It's only four episodes long. It is pretty heavy. There is a lot of talk about some pretty heavy stuff relating to sexual, domestic abuse, that kind of stuff, uh, religious trauma, all of that soup. Um, so be be aware of that. But if you are into that kind of documentary style, shiny, happy people on Amazon Prime, extremely good. Hell yeah, man. I still got to watch that one. Thank you, everyone, for listening to this week's discussion of The Godfather. If you'd like to share your own thoughts on the movie, you can always email us at I saw that once podcast at gmail.com. I saw that once at gmail.com was taken, and so I had to make it complicated, it. and I don't like it. And Those if we bastards. like your email enough, we might just read it on the episode. Robert, what movie will we be discussing next week? The Godfather! So make sure that you join us for that. As always, uh, we will close with our quote of the week, and I'll go for this week. My quote of the week is, I'm going to make him an offer that he just won't really want to say no to. (laughs) My name is Kevin (laughs) bowles Loman. (laughs) I'm Robert Coe. And this has been I Saw That Once and We'll Never Watch The Godfather Again. Never! Never!